work very hard with this and uh, so Marisa, uh, it's very, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, as it was mentioned here, I will be speaking about the uh, Iranian side, there was happening in Balochistan. Uh, as it was mentioned, the Balochistan geopolitical situation is very important. I think it is one of the reasons also, that reason is not uh, uh, prospering and in peace, it is because of this border. And uh, border that always doesn't mean that they have to be changed to be peaceful, or sometimes keeping border also does not keep peace also, as a target member. One should look at the local situation, and the situation that is brought those borders, and the situation that we are come together, uh, we have come to this situation, and how we can come out of this situation. As far as Balochistan is concerned, Balochistan is a geopolitical uh, situation, and also it is uh, rich in the natural resources, and it has uh, the, the sea line in that region, which is also very important for many of the other countries uh, surrounding Balochistan for their resources to reach the sea also. So all of this makes the situation much more complicated when it's concerned to Balochistan. Why Balochistan was divided, everybody knows that the colonial power at the time decided that it should be like that. They could have decided otherwise also. Uh, but today I think that decision, uh, whatever, by whom that was made, is backfiring to everybody. And this is the situation because this did not help the democratization of the, the situation in the Southeast Asia and the Middle East. It was mentioned here that Baluchistan, Iran is not part of Southeast Asia, but anyway, being Baluchistan in Pakistan, so Baluchistan struggled in both Central Asia, in Afghanistan, and in uh, Southeast Asia, and in the Middle East also. In the Iranian side of Baluchistan, it was talking about the resources in the Pakistan side of Baluchistan. There we have also major uh, resources. Uh, in, in 2004, the regime said that with 16 blocks of the new oil uh, have been found in Iran, and uh, most uh, of them were in Baluchistan. Uh, and there was also interest, also, as it was mentioned, also from Western companies being American and everybody else came this in those situations. But as we know, Iran is in a political situation with the international community with it when it's come to there. Many issues, and it's not, uh, it's not possible to invest in those. And also, in, recently in 2012, Iran uh, also said that uh, they have found new resources in uh, Omar Sea, which is completely in Balochistan when it's concerned Iran, and we Baloch call it, of course, Macron Sea. It has been for centuries, uh, Macron Omar is just a new name from the Valley time. They said they have found the uh, natural resources in Omar Sea that are equal to the complete resources that Iran have, both oil and in gas. And this led also, of course, in Iran, when they find some oil resources, they always think in terms of militarization. This is where it, the, the Iran also started the maneuver in Balochistan, also in this February. Um, Mr. Ahmadinejad was there in Chabar for the immigration of this uh, uh, the maneuver, the naval maneuver, both by the Revolution Guard and the Iranian army. There he said that uh, Balochistan could, for uh, many years or many decades, uh, could uh, fill all of Iran because of its natural resources. After the naval uh, maneuver was uh, over, Iran also announced that they are building a new naval base close to the Gwad that which was mentioned here, in a city that we Baluch called Gwad. It is the uh, exact new border with the Pakistani side of Balochistan. Uh, but the Iranian, of course, changed the name to Pasabanda, since they want to they could also pronounce it themselves. This is one problem that we have in Iran also, where they change the name of the Baluch cities, even if it's far away from the center, just to make sure that they can pronounce it. They I have to say here that they have very difficult to pronounce my family name, Bolei Day. Most of the Swedish is very, I live in Sweden, people there can pronounce it, but in Iranian, it was very difficult for them to pronounce it. I hope one day they will learn it. Uh, and this is, uh, we can see that what's happening in this situation. So we see that Iran always at least finds something in Balochistan and beat in a region. They always try to militarize that region and that's been more suppression for the people in many ways. And we can mention there the Iran, uh, what's happened in Iran at the same time. Iran is uh, doing this maneuver, moving closer to the Pakistani border the military. And the China is also come to the border. So this means that Iran and the Chinese the borders are supposed to uh, getting much more closer comparably than before. Now this is just uh, about 20 minutes 
you can walk there or you can just take a boat from Guad to Guad, it is uh, maybe 10 minutes uh, if you take a boat from Guad to Guad. So there is no border between Iran and China at the moment, uh, if you consider this uh, situation. Uh, another problem that is, uh, was mentioned here, and I also want to mention it in the perspective from the Iranian side of Balochistan, it is Islamic extremism. Because in Iran, we have also a special situation. The Iranian government, as we know, is a uh, theocratic government based in the Shia sect, and the Baluch majority of the Baluch are Sunni in Iran. And this is one of the causes also that here in Iran we had this uh, 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 national operation from the Shah's time. It was intensified during the Islamic regime because uh, the Baluch are Sunni. And from the beginning, the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, considered Baluch uh, as anti revolutionary. And this uh, policy has been shown in many ways. But historically, everybody knows that it was mentioned here that the Baluch have been very secular people and we have tried to live a secular life, uh, the way of life that we have been used to. But when we opened our eyes, we uh, found that situation where we did not control it, uh, given those borders and international situation with the new, uh, found the Islamization in the region. Uh, what is happening today, especially in the Brahmin situation there in Balochistan, is that, that both Iranian and Pakistani government try to use the Islamic extremism or fundamentalism against the Baluch uh, national democratic forces. And they also try to uh, make Baluch more uh, uh, fundamentalist or extremist Muslim. This is to say that uh, in Iran and Balochistan, never historically we have any a uh, fundamentalist group uh, during those times, they were Baluch uh, uh, group uh, coming and fighting against the regime of Shah. But none of them was uh, extremists like we had recently that has been happening in the Iran and Balochistan. We find that is, uh, there are many small groups that uh, come uh, to existence and then they disappear. Most of them are uh, active in uh, the same kind of activity, that is to say, it's indiscriminate killing. What did the Pakistani state do? and the Iranian state were against the way of others. Uh, and, and they, of course, uh, tried the Iranian uh, government, and we can see that uh, those groups have some special characteristics that uh, what I've seen from those uh, regions. Most of those uh, groups, they have, for instance, uh, even in Sejong Dorga, Ansar, and uh, Sakai Sahaba, so any of those, they have also the counterpart part of the Pakistan side of Balochistan. And they are also involved in Pakistan side of Balochistan against the Baluch National Democratic Forces, but they, uh, uh, try to attack them, terrorize them, or assassinate them. And another characteristic for those groups is that all they have the same uh, ideology or common aim, and if you look at their literature, or they're anti Shia, or uh, uh, they say that they are fighting for their Sunni right in Iran. Uh, but uh, uh, they are uh, always split in smaller groups. They are never, uh, we cannot uh, see that they are larger groups. They are always group of small uh, leadership and the one uh, people here and one people there. And, uh, so this makes them much easier to be controlled. I think one of the reasons is they are uh, made small by the Pakistan and Iran government is because they uh, control them. And another, uh, some of those groups, not all of them, some of those groups' uh, members goes easily between Iran and Pakistan without any problem. There is no problem for them. They can move uh, from Afghanistan to come to Iran, go to Pakistan, and uh, bring people, transport people from Arabian Peninsula to the uh, east, this side of Baluchistan, and from this side also, the same, I, I'm sure there should be some of those. The suicide bomber to the other side of the Arabian Peninsula, they go to the Yemen or some other place, to Iraq to Syria, uh, nobody knows. But they are transported in this region also. Uh, what is the reason for that, that Iran and Pakistan are uh, doing this uh, to uh, support those Islamic groups in Balochistan? It is, uh, of course, uh, the main reason is, uh, as you can see, is to create false artificial uh, political processes in that region. To replace the Baluch National Democratic Federation uh, for the national party. And I think to some extent they have been also successful in that. Uh, in, in, in that. And uh, another reason is that to create some kind of control and stability in Balochistan. Because those Islamic groups, what is their demand? I mean, when you say I'm an extremist group asking for the Sunnis' right in Iran, how you can achieve Sunnis' right in Iran if Iran is not going to be a democratic and secular government? If you just say that one, 
Sun is right in Iran without saying that Iran should be secular and democratic government. How do you have to achieve those right? Are you telling all of your country is Sunni state? <laughs> because in Iran, 70% or 80% of the people are Shia. And this is, uh, this does not give anything benefit to the Baluch cause. And this is what the, both Iranian and Pakistan government likes in that region to be. And of course, uh, it was mentioned here, I think it's some of the drug trafficking also in Baluchistan, which is also a major problem. It's both internally for the Baluch situation. Uh, because many of the uh, young people in Baluchistan have uh, a uh, drug or so on. As we can you know, in the, in the 60s, uh, the, the service that have gone down there in the Iran and Baluchistan at the time, even by the Iranian government itself, by the education ministry, that the uh, drug was go through on this kind of thing, very much unknown in Baluchistan at the time. But by the Tosh Shah left, already they have introduced heroin to the region in Baluchistan. And um, during the Islamic Revolution, uh, you could see that uh, no, uh, that the drug was trafficking from Baluchistan to the other side, or that the Afghanistan situation has been like that, that the, the drug transport from Afghanistan to Iran has dropped from 60% uh, to 28%, so the Iran is trying to start a new drug uh, to sell to the, to the world. This is called Shisha, which is a common cartel that they use. It's not the same Shisha as the, uh, that they use in uh, the cafeteria and same thing which is some kind of crystal and chemical and this uh, drug that Iran develop and uh, both sells inside Iran and outside and they import it. Countries like Turkey and uh, Minister already have complained to Iran that uh, you are smoking this uh, drug which is very much uh, worse than this heroin uh, for uh, countries. And what I can say about the last word, because the time is uh, closing, that uh, as I can see, the Balochistan situation has an implication that was mentioned here for the region and for the international community, and this is what I think here, uh, the Baluch also find it uh, very much important for them, and I think it's the uh, Baluch also feel the situation that they have a uh, common interest with the international community. Both in the term of uh, those countries uh, becoming democratic country or either Baluch right are being uh, accommodated in some other way because the important thing is that the Baluch right are respected and Baluch has, the, the, has been uh, accepted as a nation in their own, if within this border or outside this border. So this is uh, where the, the, the main things lie. And I think the Baluch situation, the Baluch situation, uh, would help the international community in many respects being controlling the drug and controlling the Islamic extremism because it will break the, the communication line from Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan because it was international border and the insecurity created the situation that is the Islamic groups can start the border. They can go to this one and hide in that side and on that side of the border. And Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan do not have any concept of the well-being of those people and they would like the situation uh, to be like that. If this is broken, I think it would help also in both in the term of the drug trafficking and Islamic extremism, and also Balochistan being placed where many of those T3 pipeline or peace pipeline and they would uh, pass through the due, due to the political uh, situation and also from Central Asia. It will also, a peace and security in Balochistan and Balochistan where the Baloch people are happy with the situation, will help the economic growth in the international community also. Thank you very much.